was Ronnie Ronald was born here in this house in 1923 and he used to go to the attic room which is obviously at the top top of the house and you can see the small window around the back where he used to practice his bird calls and his whistling to the uh, neighbours who were tending their gardens and they'd say where's that blackbird? They thought they could hear a robin and he used to whistle in these streets in Islington for pennies. The British Music Hall Society was started in a pub on Tottenham Court Road in September 1963 after a period that the surveyor and theatre historian John Earl called the legalised vandalism of theatres. Although the old spirit of music hall had gradually faded out almost 45 to 50 years prior to that, we still had some of the wonderful venues with great names such as empires, palaces and hippodromes. And they welcomed, embraced and enjoyed live variety entertainment. Today we honour a man who smashed all box office records on the Moss Stoyle Theatre circuit. It is my honour and my delight to be the chairman of the British Musical Society as we enter our 58th year of celebrating musical and variety. On behalf of the British Musical Society, I thank every single one of you for turning out today and also a very special thanks to Alison Young and Christine Padwick for organising this event. Thank you very much. Probably best known just at the moment as uh, Mr. Carson from Downton Abbey, Jim Carter, OBE. Thank you, Jim, because Jim is going to unveil. Compliments to you, Christine. Christine tracked me down by writing on a brown envelope, Jim Carter, OBE, Hampstead, and it found me. <laughs> so uh, here I am. I'm delighted to be here. You might be wondering why I'm here. My very, very loose connection to Ronnie Ronald is that I mime to his bird song at eventide in the Dennis Potter series, Singing Detective. It was, it, it was actually quite an easy job because I, I'm not musical in any way. I couldn't have lip sync to any of his yodeling numbers, but we're miming to whistling where you've got your mouth covered. <laughs> as long as you get your cuckoo in the right place, you're all right. And I gather that uh, Rosemary and Ronnie saw the uh, Singing Detective. And I gather it was Rosemary who asked for me to be here. Was that right, Christine? Well, uh, possibly. You're my choice, but she was so pleased she expected someone lesser. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll buy you a drink later. <laughs> this morning I got an email from Rosemary. I've been having an email uh, conversation with her. She lives in Auckland now, uh, in, in New Zealand. Dear Jim, well, today is the day when you have to pay for your sins in attempting to whistle like Ronnie. I'm sure you never thought all those years ago that this day will come and catch up with you. I so wish that I could be there today in person and thank you for the honour of unveiling Ronnie's plaque, shake your hand and perhaps even give you a hug. I sincerely hope you'll enjoy the day as much as I will when I receive the first photos. Kind regards, lots of love, Rosemary. So I feel that she's here in, in spirit. So that, that's lovely. I ought to thank actually uh, John, the owner of this house, because he, he's allowed us to uh, take over his steps and admire his cosmos. Um, uh, when Ronnie was born here, he described this place as a tenement. Um, so I don't want to drop your house price. Uh, they lived on, in two and a half rooms on the top floor and they cooked on the little landing up there. Uh, it was lit by little gas mantles, you know, the gas jets with the, the glass yes. balls around and, and uh, heated by a fire. They were poor, but they were happy. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, as a kid, he had this amazing talent to whistle and to imitate birds and, and, and a great singing voice. And one day he came home to his mum, who had to live on uh, two pounds a week housekeeping, with a hat full of coins that he got from local workmen. But they were so impressed by him that they, um, they filled his hat with pennies. Um, is there a pub, locals, is there a pub round here called the Trafalgar? Yes. There is, yeah. It's up there. Just up there. <laughs> well, Ronnie's mum, uh, to make ends meet, used to play the piano in the Trafalgar, and she'd take him in and he'd whistle and they'd pass around the pots and he'd come home with three pint pots full of money. The drive, the drive for perfection, and the overweening confidence in his own ability. 
the age of 14, he left school. He went to work for a chartered accountant. Luckily, he was spotted singing in a choir by an agent, and he joined Stefani's Silver Songsters. 21 of them, all dressed in lederhosen. What an alarming thought. <laughs> but that was the road for him. He, they toured Europe. They went around Scandinavia, Denmark, Holland. They were all, it was a big success, and Ronnie was just honing his ability. Arturo Stefani, the, the impresario, became his, his mentor, his accompanist, his manager, his companion for the rest of his life. And what a life it was. I mean, in, in the 40s, he went to America on spec to try and get work. I mean, really, I mean, and they lived in, in quite poor conditions, just trying to drum up work because he was so confident in his ability. And it paid off because he ended up headlining at the Radio City Music Hall, 6,200 people four or five shows a day, seven days a week. I mean, if that's not drive, I don't know what is. And the guy became a huge star from whistling and yodeling. It's amazing. He, you can't underestimate how big he was. He recorded with Decker and Columbia, number one hits, radio shows, television shows, the Royal Command performance. There was nothing he couldn't do. And he had the wisdom because he was so wise, he knew the Rolling Stones were coming, television was coming, music hall was quaking in its boots. So he, he bought a hotel in Guernsey, they lived happily there, and he would go out and sing wherever he could get a gig. No, maybe no longer a headliner, but certainly very much desired on the variety bills of the day. It's impossible to underestimate how big a star he was. So I think it's really fitting that we're here today to honor this man. John, we thank you for giving you giving us a bit of your wall. <laughs> Add to your price value. <laughs> <laughs> Not if they know it's a tenement. Um, and I think what I should do now, is this right? Shall I, shall I unveil the pipe? Yes. One, two, three, here we go. I would like to introduce to you Sheila Harrod. And Sheila, Sheila has come from Nottingham today. <laughs> Sheila actually performed with Ronnie, and Ronnie told Rosemary how much Sheila is like him with her whistling. She continues the tradition, and she is now going to do a short tribute to Ronnie Ronald. Phone, uh, with the 78s uh, record and I copied him and at 13 I went on the stage professionally copying on me. And I won a, a world championship in Berlin against men and women and toured the world only because of him. Also I'm taking Rosemary's place because Rosemary isn't here, you know, and she asked if I could come and I was, I was honoured. It's my honour to be here today. Love it. Could cry. Won't. <laughs> A lot of people have today. They really have, haven't they? So it's, your whistle's really moving and things like that, but um, I just loved him. And her. I love the lady doing her whistling. I shed a tear. I'm, st I'm still, I'm, I'm still a bit damp. I'm here this afternoon uh, because Ronnie Renaud was born here in Downham Road, Islington. Uh, Jim Carter has unveiled a blue plaque for him, and it was the most moving thing when a lady whose name I don't know whistled for us, and uh, it was so moving. People had tears in their eyes and he would be on programs like Workers' Playtime and uh, Midday Musical. 
along with all of the comedians and the music that I enjoyed most to see. So people, people like Ronnie Renaud, I, I might be eight years old, but I knew who he was, the man who whistles. I'm a member of the British Musical. They, they gave me a, 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 a Lifetime Achievement Award, which was a, an enormous surprise. I, I never expected to receive it. And uh, I live not far away. I, 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 it says it, it's just a, a, a very short bus ride away. So, and it's it's wonderful because because of the lockdown, it, one hasn't been able to see any chums. For um, this is the first time I've seen a lot of chums that I haven't seen in a long time. So that that, that, that was great. Yeah. We met Rosemary. She was on the next table to us when we were at Ken Dodd's 90th lunch, the British Musical Society celebration lunch. We were chatting, and she told us that there had been talk of a plaque for Ronnie, her much missed husband, uh, from the society, but there, the house was up for sale and no reply was given. And when she learned that I joined the committee, she asked if I could resurrect it. And how lucky was I, because the house owners who had just moved in were so receptive to it, and it went on from there. I think Ronnie's a special talent, but we don't have people like that anymore. And I think it should be well remembered, not only people of my age, but I think it's a talent that endures, and I'm very pleased to see this plaque. I'm here because our King Rat, who normally attends these kind of events, he can't make the journey down from Doncaster, so it's my job as Prince Rat to deputise for him. So I'm here officially to represent the Grand Order of Water Rats. I was about 14, 15 years old. My father retired from farming and bought a riverside house in Beckles. And quite by chance, the next door house was owned by Ronnie. He lived uh, with his manager, Arturo Stefani, alias Fred Whisker. And we used to go to his shows at the end of the pier in Yarmouth and Lowestoft. But of course, he did a unique act, the whistling and the in monastery garden and the bird song. He did what nobody else did. And it was essentially a one-man show, and absolutely brilliant. Uh, it must have been 1949, and I was listening to the wireless uh, variety paradox, I think it was. Ronnie was introduced. I can't remember the piece, but he sang, and there was bird song, and he finished it, and then I was waiting for the next piece, and my mum shouted to him, Christopher, your tea's on the table, switch that off. So I couldn't hear anymore. But I went to have my tea, and I was thinking, what a strange thing to do. While he was singing, the BBC played some bird song. I couldn't understand why they'd done that. And then about a week later, Ronnie was being interviewed on the radio, and I listened to it. My God, he made that sound. That's yeah. not possible. And I was 10 years old then. Later in the year, my mum said to me, what would you like for your birthday? And I said, I want a record of Ronnie Rennell doing In a Monastery Garden. <laughs> and she said, never. I said, yes, please. And she got it for me. And I think I wore out two needles before the record wore out. I was lucky enough to be King Rat in 2002 when Ronnie Renaud passed the ballot we have a very elaborate ballot in the Water Rats, how people get proposed and seconded to become a member. Ronnie passed with flying colours. 
and I was lucky enough to be King Rat the day he was initiated. Absolutely brilliant. It was quite emotional for me because I can remember sitting at the lunchtime table at home when I was a kid and on the radio came In a Monastery Garden by Ronnie Renaud and I couldn't believe that this man was whistling and doing all these bird sounds and things. Absolutely brilliant. And then to be there and to oversee his initiation into the rats was just, just marvellous. Yes, Ronnie was made a water rat in 2002 when uh, Keith Simmons was king rat. And in 2013, when Joe Pasquale was king rat, he had his ball down at Bob Potter's lakeside. And I was thrilled to see Ronnie and Rosemary were guests. So I was able to have a chat with my hero. That was wonderful. And what a lovely man as well. Uh, and his lovely wife Rosemary, we became good friends. And um, that same year, I was organising a show for the Rats, uh, Encore magazine that I used to write a column in. They were having a luncheon and I asked Ronnie to be the cabaret at the luncheon. So that was one of the first things he did for the Rats. He came along and performed at that. And then we worked at Hackney Empire together as well. And at Hackney Empire, this man came on stage, he was getting on a bit then, and he whistled and got a standing ovation. It was just quite emotional to see. Lovely man, lovely people, and I'm so proud to be here today on this great occasion. I'm pleased with the way it went today. Uh, Jim Carter, who unveiled, was excellent. He'd done so much research on Ronnie, and the, the whole ceremony was quite brief, and the veil came off nicely, and Sheila Harrod at the end whistled her tribute, and it was all very moving. It was a wonderful afternoon.